everyone, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing and I wanted to show you how my cards turned out from using my Mind's Eye Jubilee Pack and I think I got this as a door prize at the Embellish It Play All Day that I went to in the spring. I was trying to remember where it came from so I think that's where this came from. And it's a pretty interesting color palette, so it was fun to work with. I didn't make, if you didn't see my video before, this idea comes from Christy Marcotte, and I'll link to her stuff below. She takes a six by six pad and makes a whole bunch of cards out of it. She makes way more than I do. On my last one, I think I did 23. On this one, I made it to 20, and I think they're all laid out here. I just wanted to show you a few of them and give you the basics of how they turned out. These were super easy cards. I used the 6x6 paper pad itself. And then uh, some of these are from one of those 65 pound cardstock packs from Michaels. You should be able to get one of those on sale for not more than $4 probably. Uh, I bought another one today for $3.33, I think. So I think when I bought this, it was $2.50. And then some of the other stuff is just cardstock that I had around because I hadn't really planned this project. And then the black that I used for the matting is from one of those paper pads or paper packs from Michaels, the 65 pounds. So very inexpensive. And then I'll show you, just hold up some of the cards for you and let you see. I didn't use formal sketches in this, but I did have the ideas in my head a little bit from the last set that I made and some routines for six by six. So the way I'm approaching uh, making a set of cards out of a six by six paper pad is first I lay out the whole set of paper and I watched Christy Marcotte's videos and kind of saw the pattern. And if you lay out the whole, just undo the whole pack and take it apart, it's pretty inspirational and it helps you figure out if it's double-sided and there's a side you don't like or a paper you're not going to use. So the first thing I do is I start by cutting my large background mat. So on an A2 card, this piece right here, if you want a 1 8 border, is uh, 4 inches by 5 and a quarter. And I know that because when you make enough cards, you get that in your head. So what I did was I went through and I cut the paper pad almost, I'd say probably at least half or two thirds of them, cut up all the papers that I liked in this size. So then I have the extra piece that I can use as accents on other cards and quite a few of the bases ready. And then you'll see repeating in here, I'll show you what I've been using. This small stamp, I'm using uh, a circle punch the stamp is a little bit interesting because it's different than most stamps. It is sort of a, I guess you'd call it a reverse stamp. It has the circle built into it and then the hello is carved out. So that's part of what makes it so interesting. I'm not sure why it's turned pink over time. So I stamped that in black and in some cases you'll see it has color around it and in others, it's another layer underneath it, which you may not be able to tell in the video. So my circle punch leaves this colored border right here. Then on some of them, if I want the pa patterned paper to show underneath, I trim that circle off and then use my circle punch again so it's the same. And then this is a scalloped circle or scalloped punch right here. And on this, some of these, I've layered it so that it has two scallops and they're just offset slightly. Uh, on others, like this one right here, I used one, two, three different size circle punches that I have, just layering them up. This is white stitching put on with a white pen. And this one I added some pearls and most of these have foam mount, so there's dimension. I'm not sure if you can see that in them. There's a couple others that I want to show you just because the product on them was interesting. So the way I approach it too is first I make the bulk of them, then I layer them up, and then I sat down and did embellishments all in a row. And I got out uh, Wink of Stella, and you can see on 
didn't use it on very many because it took quite a while. Uh, not that one. I colored the actual, uh, here we go. I think you can see it, there you go. So I colored the actual background of the hello with the wink of Stella pen in some cases, and then I used the clear star jelly roll pen in some cases to trace the hello or other accents in the paper. I did the same thing with the white. I did dots in the paper. So when you see these white dots here on the black paper, that's with the white pen. The stitching here on this green circles with the white pen. Just random dots here and there and stitching. Uh, can you see that one? There you go. So stitching right along there. Then I had a very significant sheet of these, I don't know what you call them. They have more texture than just regular jewels and they um, have a little bit of color to them, which I didn't really realize at first when I was using them. I think I'm more of a basic jewel fan, like these, just basic rhinestone bling. But I have an assortment either in, the, in a row like this or in the pattern of the paper, which may or may not pick up really well. Uh, the wheels on the bicycle, this bicycle is a die cut. I was working on these with a friend and she said, I have a cute die cut for that. So we made a couple die cuts. Um, different bling. I just, I'm just checking to see if there's anything else. Oh, this is another thing I wanted to show you. And then this, this one I had fun with. I had a few scraps left. And so I used the squares and mounted them and the jewels. I like how this one turned out. I thought that one was pretty fun. So this one, has washi tape on it and a couple others do too. This is from the Stamp and Scrap Expo and I had some stuff on my Instagram and talked about that a little bit. It's washi tape but look how nice that looks and you don't have to mess with glitter or glue and I used it on quite a few cards and I loved it. That would definitely be an example of when I hit the Queen and Company booth I should have bought a bunch of those because I could use that on almost every card. And I don't recall if they had a gold, but I definitely would like it in a gold too. So anyway, Queen and Company, and it's very nice. It tears nice, it laid down nicely. I was really happy with it. But Queen and Company traditionally does great bling anyway. Uh, here's another one I put washi tape on, a different brand. This orange layer right here is washi. So by using washi and layers of cardstock, it gives it a little bit different dimension and sheen that you can't necessarily see in the video. So the other thing that I used was just a basic Zig Writer. You could use any black pen that you have. You could use an extra fine Sharpie. You could use um, one of those Micron pens, just anything. And what I did with the black was I added some, can you see those? some little dots on the, the petals, sort of made it a petal, but really it's just a scallop, there you go. So just little dots here and there, and on this one I did the dots and the stitching. So those are my cards, and I'm trying to do a very large batch of cards, but I'm not gonna tell you why, because I don't know, somebody might see. And then every one of them says happy everything in it. Lots of times I don't do sentiments inside but on these I did want to and I'll be doing another couple of sets because I need over 50 cards and right now I probably only have about 30 so I have these and then some others so thanks so much for watching be sure and subscribe and I hope you got some great ideas out of this batch of cards you don't have to make 20 at a time but if you do think system and assembly line don't make them one by one Okay, so take some time for crafting and relaxing and take care of yourselves. I will be back again soon. Bye-bye.